Hey guys, I was teaching earlier today and the subject of two against three rhythms came up and I thought I would make a video and share a strategy with all of you. And this strategy is using a particular set of words to map out your two against three rhythm across your hands. The particular piece that I'm using to uh, convey this idea is Grieg's Biersus from his lyric pieces. So before I get into the strategy, I wanted to play a little sample of that so you can hear what it sounds like. So this piece, the Spirsus, has the two against three rhythms pretty much throughout. It's kind of, uh, I guess the main theme, uh, it has this two against three rhythm and then it progressively gets more, uh, um, the harmonies get a little bit more strange, if you will, or I think they're beautiful, but they, they get a little uh, more jarring as you go through the piece. And I think that's one of the cool things about this piece. So I'll demonstrate that in just a second. But first I wanted to mention that I'm a big fan of counting your music out loud. And I wanted to create a video sort of introducing this idea of counting out loud and kind of the universal way to do it, in my opinion. But as it turns out, this came up first, so I'm just going to summarize that real quick. I use counting out loud to choreograph my hands and um, deal with the particular timing of like the left hand, right hand on intricate parts, especially things like two against three, but dotted rhythms or really anything. A lot of things are brought to light when you count them out and you actually vocalize them. And I don't mean counting in your head and I don't mean using your metronome. I mean actually like speaking words. So the words I use when dealing with triplets are one o oh, let two o oh, let one o oh, let two o oh, let like that. Three divisions per pulse. Um, when I'm counting like eighth notes, I'll say one and two and one and two and. Now I do see some people on triplets say one one and a, one and a, two and a, or something like that. And I caution against that because in my, in my counting system, the and has a particular meaning as the halfway point between two pulses. So when you say one and a, two and a, that's the, like the one third and the two third mark of the triplet. And that's not splitting the beat, you know, down the middle um, by two. So I do not recommend saying one and a two and a one and a two. I recommend different syllables entirely. That way you'll never mix them up as you navigate between your different types of subdivision. So one o oh, let two o oh, let one o oh, let two o oh, let. Now I did not come up with this counting strategy, but I have heard others do it. Um, one of the people that I studied with, who I greatly admire, turned me on to this particular strategy, and he also turned me on to this the uh, the strategy I'm about to share with you of how to count two against three. So in this bare sus, we have this, this part that's in two, it's in the duple. You're feeling one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and like that. The right hand, you're thinking more of a triplet because the, the, in the third measure you get the idea of the triplet and you have to really feel everything in terms of that to get it right. So one o oh, let, two o oh, let, one o oh, let, two o oh, let. One O oh, let two O oh, let one O oh, let two. Now I probably wouldn't do it that fast. It'd be more like one O oh, let two O oh, let one O oh, let two O oh, let one O oh, let two O oh, let one. Now the counting strategy to deal with the two against three is to basically split the beat two ways between one of the triplets, which maps out where the duple part comes in, where the two part comes in. So when we go one, O, oh, let, between the O oh and the let is where your eighth note's gonna fall. And so if you can say and between the O oh and the let kind of quickly, you'll get, you'll get the mapping correct. And it makes it really easy and reliable to get your two against three rhythm. So it sounds like one, O, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. So I'm going to count this part out loud for you and show you how that breaks down. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. I'm counting
counting everything in terms of the third measure here so that I can have a nice unified rhythm. And I'm sort of solving for the most common issue that I'm going to see here with students, which is basically that the, the unified rhythm thing goes out the window so that they could try to work out what sounds like two against three to them. But for it to be truly two against three, the three part needs to be perfectly equal, perfectly divided by three, and the two part needs to be perfectly equal and divided by two. So those words make it, if you can just say one oh and let two oh and let, those words make it to where it's easy to kind of choreograph. So the first step in this is to just good, get good at saying one oh let two oh let one oh let two oh let. And then the next step is to get good at saying one oh and let two oh and let one oh and let two oh and let like that. Slowly one oh and let two oh and let. Then you can take that one oh and let and you can map it against the left hand and the right hand and get your choreography between the hands. So I'm going to try the right hand only here. Uh, with with those words, one o oh, and let two o oh, and let one o oh, and let two o oh, and let one o oh, and let two o oh, and let one o oh, and let two, and then you can take that and apply it to the left hand to figure out where the left hand's going to go. One o oh, and let two o oh, and let just as if you were counting one and two and, but you're incorporating the right hand's triplets in with the left hand so you can feel where it's going to fall relative to what the right hand is doing. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, sorry, I did that wrong. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. You put it together real slow. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, So that's the basic idea as to how to solve the two against three problems on this piece. Of course, it's applicable to basically any two against three piece, which I'll demonstrate in another video, like all the different things you can do with, two, with, with this particular set of words. But I did want to run through more of those parts on this piece, more, more of the two against three parts. So for anybody who is working on the Greek versus, a good strategy to dealing with this piece is before you even read through it, before you even try to get it together, since you may not have your, your two against three worked out yet, take all these parts and add that counting to it and just navigate all the different two against three parts in a row. And I'm going to demonstrate that here um, in just a second. So you can start on the two against three part and maybe do a measure after so that you can practice integrating it with the piece and just move from idea to idea. So I'm going to do all of the two against three rhythms here, uh, starting with measure three. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. The next one is on the next line. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. And the next one's a little farther. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one. The next one is after the B section on the next page, uh, after the, the key changes. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. Let me make sure I did that right. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let, one, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. Then the next one is here. One, oh, and let, two, oh, and let. I got those all right for you, but that's the basic idea between how to count two against three. Another example where you may want to use it is like WC's arabesque number one, or uh, there's the D flat major nocturne that I released. That's actually in six, but there's two against three in there. Um, and that that's actually where I first learned about the rhythm. So, I mean, pretty much you know, if you can say one, oh, and let two, oh, and let one, oh, and let two, oh, and let in time at a slow tempo and be patient with your mapping of your hands and get comfortable with that, what feels like syncopation on the, on the left hand, one, oh, and let 
to oh. and let. If you can do that, two against three rhythms really shouldn't be a problem. And the reason why I feel like this particular method is helpful is because you can do it at a very slow speed and there's no like approximating. You can do it exactly, precisely, mathematically correctly. Um, and I found that this is a pretty easy, helpful strategy for most people. So if you guys found this helpful, feel free to like and share the video and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.